we're getting ready to get into the word of God. Bishop is going to share uh, some of what we've been going into on the lot, and uh, we're just going to move forward. Well, 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 the thing, the thing we must understand is that God will never put you back into the place that you fell off at. Some people think restoration is just to go right back where you were and to continue from that point on. Mm. But when people are restored by God, it's not just restoration. It's restoration, compensation, and reparations. Mm. So, right. so, 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 so the reparations, let me talk about that reparation because the reparations is the payment for the penalty of the pain. Wow. The payment for the penalty. Come on. The, the payment for the suffering. It's the compensation for being set back or put in his position. Mm -hmm. So that's why Job could not go back to being the same Job he was before the Lord allowed the enemy to attack him and his family. But the compensation package is going to outweigh anything that's ever happened during the time of terror or mm -hmm. during the time of your setback. Right. So right. God will not put you in the same place you fell off. But God is actually putting his people in a higher place, a greater position. So it's restoration, compensation, reparations, and all those together is going to give us an accelerated mm. speed of the recovery process. Yes. That it will, it's going to take five years for others, but the church and people that believe God and have faith in God are going to see things done instantly. Like, and it's going to happen they, that way because of the working of God, the Holy Spirit. Yes. There is a difference. There is a difference between uh, man's excellence and man's skill yes. and man's intelligence. When power hits man and, 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 the, 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 uh, and, and influences your, 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 your workings and you are unction by the unctionizer, mm -hmm. it brings a supernatural result. Yes. So this recovery is not just, you're so smart, you're so intelligent, or you got to hook up with somebody. It's the kind of result that don't make no sense. Wow. You know, it doesn't it, add up. It doesn't, it doesn't add, human it does not add up. It's kingdomatics. Yes, kingdom. And that's why I like that. it's a kingdomatical certainty. Yes. You know, when God gives his word that I'm, I'm going to restore you, I, I'm going to restore you. It's a kingdomatical certainty. The numbers are not man's numbers. God can make it be whatever he wants it to be. So we can't go into man's wisdom. We got to go into what God's wisdom is saying. Man's wisdom just says, okay, we were taught one plus one is two. But when you're talking about what God could do, God is the God that takes five loaves, two fishes, feeds over 5,000 women plus men and children. One of the things that, that, that a lot of leadership within the ministry and in church are concerned about is will my church ever recover? Will my church ever get back? Will people be afraid to come to church? Will people be afraid to, you know, be around other people? Will they be afraid for crowds again? Da 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 church opened in California, uh, no Texas, the state of Texas. Church seats four thousand people. Texas reopened. He had about four hundred people in a four thousand seater church, which normally keeps ten thousand people a week. Mm -hmm. So, you know, the people, the people are a little bit concerned right now because there's no vaccine, there's no no cure to this problem. The, 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 this thing is spreading, and it seems like even our greatest health officials don't have it under control. But the Lord told me to prophesy. Come on. And, it, and, and this prophetic word is going to be from Haggai chapter 2, verse 9. He says, the glory uh -huh. of this latter house yes. shall be greater than the former. I believe it. See, God cannot take away and allow the glory to fall off and not come back better. So the glory of the latter house, mm -hmm. the glory of the future house, in, in, in we can't define what glory looks like. We can't define what the new reality and the restoration and the, and the, the put back looks right, like. Right, right. We, we can't define that. Right. But we can, without, with, without a doubt, with 100% certainty, that the glory of the church, the former glory of the church cannot compare to the future glory of the church. Right, right. Because he says he takes us from glory to glory to glory. Yes. And so... Every round and every situation and every season, God takes us to a greater level. Mm -hmm. And so maybe it's not what we 
normally would expect. Right. But God is doing things in an unusual way. Right. He's doing, he's doing things in, in an uncommon way. Mm -hmm. And why would we want the same when our God wants something different? Come on. Now, mind you, the word doesn't change. His, his, his truth doesn't change. Um, his strength and power and authority never changes. But there's times where God's methods to doing things right. does change. Yes. And so we've got to be so synchronized with Holy Spirit that we're able to adjust and to maneuver correctly so that we don't fall off. <laughs> right. Because remember, God and, is and, the and one get, that doesn't change. And get outdated. Change. Yeah, and get outdated <laughs> and get phased out or discontinued. Come on. Any church that's not flowing under the power of the Holy Spirit will be discontinued. Mm. And you don't want to be discontinued because, you know, when items in the store discontinued, they use it in with an 88 cents or 97 cents or 93 cents, some odd number. So, so, mm -hmm. so don't look odd during the time that God is moving in the spirit. Don't, don't do, don't, don't look odd. Be synchronized in the spirit so that time doesn't pass you by. Right. And that's even with your business in your life. Don't be so caught up into what happened yesterday and the way things were. Mm -hmm. I talked about it the other night about Naaman. He, he, wanted, he wanted his healing from leprosy to be a certain kind of way. And Elijah said, go wash yourself in the, in the Jordan. Mm -hmm. He was like, man, I want to go down to Jordan. I've never seen you heal nobody like that before. Right. So what? You've never seen God heal nobody like that before. He can use whatever he wants. He's God. He can do it whatever way he wants. He's God. He can use the Jordan if he wants to. <laughs> he can use the axe head if he wants to. He can use the, the boat, Red Sea, the boat if he wants to, the Red Sea if he wants to. He's God, yeah. and that's the thing. When you were talking about recovering, you're saying, you know, God is going to restore you, but it's going to be great and it's going to be better than before. It's all about His power touching that thing. <sighs> it's about His power influencing the results. His power causing something supernatural to take place in our lives. And all the things and names we just made, Jordan. Red Sea, what else we said, um, oceans, whatever, the axe, ocean, head. The axe head, all those things would be nothing without the power of God. That's right. The rod in Moses' hand. So, so the rod would be nothing without the power of That's God. That's right. So, so we can't he go. He does what he wants to do. Yes. With God. And he switches it up because you know what man does? Man has a tendency. If God uses this phone, God uses this phone to bring you out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Boom. <laughs> Hold up the phone. The phone. It breaks it open and you walk through. Bow down to the phone. Man will start bowing down. <laughs> to the phone. Old phone. It, it, seriously. So God, in his infinite wisdom, switches this up and says, let me move from the phone to using the iPad. Mm. Because man is so quick to start idolizing stuff. Yes. When he wants us to rec recognize, I am the I am that I am. I, I am that I am, and I will be what I will be. I yes. am. I'm self-existent. I use whatever I want to yes. use. He uses whatever tools he wants to use. He uses a donkey, okay? Yes. A donkey. He uses whoever and whatever he wants for his agenda. But you said something uh, just a few mom moments ago, and I want to just, just touch that just a little bit. You said some people are afraid of what is it going to look like. And, and that's not just in church. What is the business going to look yeah, like? Sure. What is the family going to yep. look like? What is the community going to look like? What is social life going to look like? What is it? The, but first thing that comes to mind is the scripture says, how many times? Be not afraid. Yes. So if we line up with the word and the scripture tells us to be not afraid, I'm not going to be afraid. So then what are we going to be? Expect it. Expect it. Now, you touched on it. You just said to us that God said that the, the, the latter house is not going to be able, the, the latter house is going to be greater than the former house. Yes. Okay? We take that. We believe that. We go from glory to glory to glory. We've heard you teach that, and uh, we know that. So now, we got to channel our mind and mm. condition our mind to not look for what was. Mm. And so he says, listen. Remember not the former things. Why would you recount wow. everything that, why would you recount their experience of the Red Sea, how you took the wheels off the chariot, how you brought them through on dry ground, then say, forget that. He says, forget that because you're going to be so stuck on me doing it that way that you're not open to the new thing. Wow. So the church should be expectant. This is exciting. This is relational. You got to hold his hand. You got to spend time with him. You got to talk to him. You got to ask him questions. You have to inquire of him. You got to seek him. See, you can't go by the playbook of been doing this 
got this. Our old playbook is phased out. Pastors. The old leaders, strategy. Our old, the old strategy. Our old playbook is fa played out. The There's strategy. nothing on the playbook that told us any of our forefathers that from the time we've existed told us nothing about this to put in our playbook. There is no playbook to it. Right. I mean, the old strategies. That means now, this staying is in tune with the Holy Spirit. Yeah. That, that is the only playbook we have. This never gets played out. <laughs> but he's going he's gonna to give, he's going to give, I mean, you just have me going because certain things that you just said just has me just ignited on the inside. Like, you know, like you're looking to see what was. And so some people think they can't have church unless they have their two songs. Then they know what's coming next. Then if we, listen, somebody think the church is going to shrink and it's going to be smaller. It's going to be greater. greater. It's going to be more. It's greater. going to be more numerous. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. It's, yeah. I, I, pastor, there's going to be more people than your building can fit. Think about this. And they are beyond the building. Mm. They're beyond the building. And we've seen it already. Yes. Said, right, just for outdoor church, driving church, people hanging around, standing around, pulling over their cars, stopping, looking, just watching, trying to see what are we doing outside having church in the cars. So get ready for the unconventional way yes. of God prospering his church yes. in spiritual things as well as natural things. Right. Because God is going to prosper your business. God's going to prosper uh, your education and everything concerning you. But don't expect the common way. Expect the uncommon in this time. Come on. Yes. Yeah. Uncommon miracles. Mm -hmm. Uncommon breakthroughs. Mm -hmm. And people are going to be like, I never heard of that before. What made you think of that? Get right, ready. Right. He said, I will cause you to, to have witty inventions. This yes. is going to be the, the hour of witty inventions. I prophesy this to you right now. This is going to be the hour of witty inventions. God is going to cause you to invent something that's never been thought of before. You thought that Amazon was it. You thought that Uber was the greatest. But right inside of you right now lies the success and the power to change a generation, to change the world. You are a world changer. You are a world shaker. You are a mold breaker. God has given you that inspiration by his Holy Spirit to do what's never been done before. So don't expect the usual. Expect God to use you in the uncommon way. Ooh, I receive Glory all of that. God, hallelujah. Yes, Lord. Uncommon favor, yes. uncommon increase. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. Uncommon provisions and uncommon connections are coming your way starting this week. I declare it in the name of Jesus Ooh. Christ. Come on, this is my week for the uncommon. Wow. This, this season begins the uncommon. Yes. Glory to God. Activated on a whole new level. Activated on a whole new a level. A whole new level. And that's what it is. It's the activation. A whole new level. Because somebody said, oh, I've seen uncommon things, but not on this level. No, not on this level. <laughs> not, not in this grade. Not on this level. You can see, you can actually increase in wisdom. You can increase in favor. And now you just said, it, listen, you're going to see God in an uncommon way on a whole new level. What does that look like? Mm. What is that? You got to meditate that, that looks on like some favor. of the things that, like that God ridiculous. says to us. That looks like favor ridiculous. Ridiculous favor. The NIV version says in the 66 book, 66, Isaiah 66, uh, the NIV version uh, says it very clearly. He says, do I bring to the moment of birth? Mm. Do I bring to the moment of birth and not deliver, says the Lord? Do I close up the womb? When I bring to delivery, says the Lord. No. He says, rejoice with Jerusalem and be glad for her. All you who love her, rejoice greatly with her. All you who mourn over her, for you will nurse and be satisfied at her comforting breast. You will drink deeply and delight in her overflow in abundance. Overflowing abundance is what God is getting ready to do for his church. That's a bold decree. Rejoice. Yes. People that were trying to be critical of the church, like, why didn't y'all know about this problem? Why did, couldn't y'all prophesy it? Well, what are you going to do now? Oh, you haven't seen the greatest version of God's people and, 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 and the church yet. My the God. greatest of us has not yet been revealed. But mm -hmm. the hour is coming. That God is getting ready to reveal his church in higher dimensions, on higher levels. Greater glory. Greater glory. Yes. Greater glory. Hallelujah. Greater favor. Mm. Because we were at the point of birth, then the pandemic happened. Mm. And God is saying, no, I won't bring you to the point of birth right. and cause the atmosphere around you to stop what I am producing. Come on. And what I am bringing forth mm -hmm. out of the church. 
Oh, yes. So don't, don't worry about what's happening in the delivery room. You shall deliver. Yes. Don't worry about what's happening in your atmosphere. You shall bring forth. Come on. Don't worry about all the demographics and, and things that are going on in the particulars and the logistics around you. God says, I'm going to give you the power to bring forth what I promise. Yeah. This is a birthing season, actually. Yes. You're getting ready to birth dreams, hallelujah, that you, that you didn't even imagine that you would bring forth. You're getting ready to make connections in areas that you had no interest in in the previous years or months before this. But now God is sparking new interests. And you never thought about this field, says the Lord. But God says, I'm going to open up new fields, new territories. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. Hallelujah. New things are coming your way. New hallelujah. Yeah. Things are happening that you know not of and that you knew not of previously. Come on. But God said, this is me that's doing it and step in it. Yeah. Even if it's not your hobby, even if it's not your place of interest, mm. because God is sparking yeah. new interest, says the spirit. Step into it. Get ready for new interests. Yes. Step into it. New interests. Oh, yes. All no, of a sudden do you're interested in this. and You don't know why you're interested in it. Yes. Welcome you, to the you don't know what's sparking. God said, I'm sparking new revelation in you. Come on. I'm sparking new ideas in you. I'm birthing new dreams in you. Yes. And I'm bringing forth out of you new levels of manifestation. And don't be weary about it. Don't be concerned about it. Because God said, it is me that is doing it. Oh, says yes. the spirit of God. Woo. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Dreams are becoming Hallelujah. reality. The manifestation and this these divine uh, occurrences that are taking place. It puts me in mind of Luke, the fifth chapter in how you see uh, a tr uh, I tried and I tried. Basically, that's what I call it. When the fisherman with Simon Peter and the fisherman go fishing and catch nothing. And there it is. One word after they allowed Jesus to use Peter's boat. There it is. Jesus gives the word and says, launch out into the deep. And there's a different result, mm. a result so great that. I mean, I believe this is what's happening with the supernatural occurrences that take place in the believer's life is that it's going to cause something even far more meaningful wow. to take place <laughs> when it comes to the kingdom. Yes. And that is they go from with their trade and their skill, exhausting, doing all. And see, when you look at try, try means it try means that you did your best. Try means you applied your effort. Try means you did what you could do to the best that you knew how to do it. And that's somebody that's just connected right now you did all that you knew to do you tried and you tried and still didn't get the result you tried with the family thing you tried with the finances you tried you tried you tried and it looked like that thing wouldn't break but yet you allow jesus to speak to you you allow him to you use your boat and just like they went out there the boat of your life they went out there and they saw a supernatural result the result being you go from nothing to nets breaking to boats about to sink because the catch was so big. From nothing. Your catch is about to, to be breaking, your catch is about to be so then both big. Sinking. It's gonna draw the attention of neighbors. Hmm. It's gonna draw the attention of neighbors. Yeah. All watchers are getting ready to watch wow. the divine performance in wow. your life. This is about God displaying his glory in the window display of your life through your life so that they'll know that he is God. What does Peter do? He doesn't say, Well, man, we don't hit the jackpot. We ain't never made this kind of money. He had enough sense to know this don't make no sense. Mm -mm. Our best fishing day wouldn't produce this. No. The best climate wouldn't produce this. Climate, skill, all that together. This is something else going on here. What does Peter do? He repents. <laughs> he starts noticing, I need to repent. I believe that these divine performances that take place in our life, this supernatural outbreak, this, 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 this uh, increase that is far greater than anything that we've ever seen is going to cause sinners wow. to say, I need to be saved. Wow. He's using it in your life. Yeah. And he'll say, Ain't, there's no way in the world you should have that. And said, we know your story. Wow. We know where you come from, mm -hmm. how you get that. And the Holy Ghost seals it with Ecclesiastes chapter 7, verse number 8 says, better is the end of a thing than the beginning. Right. Oh, yes. Let me say it again. Better is the end of a thing than right. the beginning. Thereof the patient, the patience within our spirit to wait until the process is over. Wait until God's hand shows up and God arranges things that he's already ordained and prearranged mm. because you've been prearranged and foreordained for victory. 
And if you don't know that, you're sitting here waiting for victory to happen when victory has already happened in existence. Oh, yes. So, is it, so your victory exists. It just hasn't hit your timeline. It's a finished work. It's a finished work. The finished work of Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. Finished. Mm -hmm. it, it's done. We, we, we're already restored. We've already recovered. We've already been set up. And God has already given us double for our pain and our afflictions. Right. Amen. It's not God's will for us to walk around his children. Think about it. He's a loving father. It's not his will for us to walk around blinded and, mm -hmm. and fearful and afraid because we are his children. This is, this is, this is one of the, the best times. This is the time to display the benefits of the kingdom. Yes. That we have access to, to information from on high. Yes. That God is the God that will speak and say, it's going to rain before it rains. God is the God that, that will let you know to listen. You better get ready. I'm going to send water. You better dig them ditches. God loves to speak, like you say, and, and, and it's from the scripture. He speaks to the non-existent thing. Yes. He does that to us in the midst of this pandemic to let us know it's not going to last or rain. Mm. It's going, you're going to come out better. You're going to come out on top. You're resilient. You're built better than that to go away and just be folding in the corner somewhere and I don't know what's going to happen. Oh, you know, and, uh, what? <laughs> I know he's going to keep us. Absolutely. I know he's going to keep us. I know he's going to sustain us. Absolutely. And you were talking outside. I mean, Lord, I, what's that in your notes? You was talking about how God is going to deal with everything concerning um, the numbers of your life, every number of your life. Uh, no. I knew that was how to press. That was how to press, Good actually. God Almighty. You know my notes, I think, right? <laughs> I said, well. That was, that was how to press, yeah. That God's going to deal with every number in our life, all the numbers in our life. Every area. Every area of our life, every number God's going to deal your with. Your age, numbers. the number of your days. Age, number of days. Your, your household, number. how many are in your household? household. <laughs> Thank your, you, Jesus. Your address, your phone number. God's going to deal with every number in your life. You better receive that. <laughs> oh, yes. Glory to God. Um, even your medical numbers, medical numbers that should come down, the Holy Spirit is even touching yes. your numbers. And those that should go up, the Holy Spirit is touching your numbers. And that your doctors are getting ready to be amazed by your numbers. Somebody because say, God is not into numbers. Yes, he is. It's a whole book. A whole That's book. It's called Numbers. Numbers. <laughs> You better get ready for the numbers, y'all. Oh my God. <laughs> That's right. A whole book called Numbers. And every number in that book, it, it represents something. Every number. Every yes. number represents something. And the you gotta and, of yeah, life yeah, and you, you gotta realize it. That that, that 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 you're at the age that you are at this time for a for a specific reason. And God has numbered even the days of your life and numbers numbered even the hairs yes. upon your head. God knows specifically the numbers in your life. And any number that's out of whack, God is going to fix your numbers. Even those low numbers in your account, God's getting ready to increase your numbers. Somebody better put that in the box. Say, God's getting ready to increease my numbers. And somebody, your numbers are not low. Uh -huh. God says, I'm talking to you too. I'm about to dramatically increase them. Yeah. <laughs> Listen, even if you're a millionaire, get ready. God's going to step up your status. Every millionaire is getting ready. For his ready, glory. Getting ready to come into multi, 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 multi millions. In Jesus' name. Oh, yes. Yeah, I, I, I believe God. And that poverty level, that number of poverty, that, that poverty-stricken number, th this is the last season of being poverty-stricken, broke, for any kind of reason. Money and success and favor is going to be the future of your life. I, I, and that's what we decree to declare today. Wow. Yeah. God's working on the numbers. And it's funny you would say that because you were talking about restoration. And so you got to know if he knows the numbers of the hairs on your head, he knows how much you lost. Yes. He knows how much you cried. He knows how much you suffered. And that's why we got to stop seeing ourselves as we are and start seeing ourselves as we shall be. Of what should we shall be. Stop seeing yourself as you are. Start seeing yourself uh, the same way God sees you. Because God knows the outcome from the investment that he's made to keep you alive, even to bring you here. And that's why you survived. That's why you're not dead. That's why you woke up this morning, because God sees the beginning, hallelujah, the end right in the beginning. In the beginning, he can see the end. Now it's time for our faith to start seeing the end of a thing in the yes. beginning. By yes. faith, by faith, I can start here, but at the end, I see, right. at the end, I see the, the, come on, the end in the beginning. David saw the end in the beginning. 
David saw the so end in the beginning. Joseph saw the end in the beginning. But David saw the end in the beginning, and David spoke the end in the yes, beginning. Yes, he did. So as he's walking toward, toward Goliath, he spoke the end in the beginning. So he says, okay, you come to me with like this and like that, but I come to you in the name of the Lord. Yes. He said, in this day, God's going to deliver you into my hands this day, mm -hmm. and I'm going to feed you the fowls of the ears, getting ready to eat you up and everything else. Right. He spoke the end in the beginning. Mm -hmm. Can you now speak your end in the beginning? Declare your end in the beginning. Right now, it's the beginning. But declare your end already. Declare your victory already. Don't get into a deal without declaring the end in the beginning. Come on. This deal's gonna come through for me. Yes. I'm gonna be have the winning bid. I'm gonna be the one to possess that property. Declare the end in the beginning. I'm the owner of that house. I am the owner of that apartment yes. complex. I'm the owner of that commercial storefront building. I'm the owner of that shop. Declare the end in the beginning. Don't sign a contract. Don't get in contract if you can't declare the end in the beginning. Right. Glory to God. Declare the end of your family now. Declare the end of your children now. <laughs> they're coming out of My father declared the end of our children, the beginning of our marriage. My father declared the end of it, didn't he? He oh, declared it. Yes, he said, he's got he said I see a lot of kids coming from this marriage. We look at him like, huh? We sure did. We're like, what are you talking about? What are you talking about, Bishop Jane Pullins? What are you talking about? But he said, I see, a lot. He said, I see a lot of kids. Like, man, he done lost his mind. Yeah, my family was like, it's easy. Yeah, but he ain't going to have a lot of kids, right? <laughs> and all of a sudden, here we got five kids. That's right. That's right. You have the power to speak the end in the beginning. You have the power and to declare. He gives, he gives us, um, you know, because you, even though you are a bishop and, and, you, and you are apostolic, what you're flowing into there is very prophetic. And then also yeah. giving, you know, the word of knowledge. He speaks his word and mm. tells you, no matter what you are dealing with right now, yes. you're coming out greater. Yes. This thing is not going to overtake you. I know what you lost, mm. but what you gain is going to be so great yes. that you won't even remember. Glory to God. <laughs> he's going to call you Yes, you won't even about remember. It. What he's birthing in your life is so great. Is so great. That you won't remember. About it. The, the sting Joseph of it, forgot about the it. The pain of it. He named one of his children it. after the fact that, Joseph named one of his children after the fact that God caused him to forget all the pain he spent in it his father's house. It was a lot of house. pain. It caused a lot of pain from prison, a pit prison, then, come on, then, I mean, being falsely accused. Right. I mean. Think about that. Think about sitting in jail knowing stripped. you didn't do what they said you did. Yeah, and you in jail. And you in jail. Yeah. That, that really happened to yeah. Joseph. <laughs> but the blessing was so big. But so big, it caused him to forget. It caused him to forget it. Mm. You're, you're going to forget that abuse. You're going to forget. You'll know what happened, but you're going to forget the forget pain of it. Forget about the pain of the, it. The, the sting of it, of it is, right. will be removed. Right. God is right. removing the sting out of your life. Mm. The sting of your past. Mm. The sting of your situation. The sting of the altercation. That divorce. Yeah. Yeah, the sting of it, God's removing it. Because of what they stole. They, they stole it. I get the Holy Ghost say somebody, they stole it from you. Mm. What God has for you is so great. And that's so important because God told me to announce four things. Vindication, reparations, restoration, and compensation. Vindication, God told me he's getting ready to vindicate you divinely. Vindicate you for the things that you've been uh, mistreated in, things that people have said about you. He's going to vindicate your name. He's going to bring value back to your name. He's going to bring the integrity back to your name. So vindication. Then reparations. He's going to cause you to receive the blessing because of the, because of the hit that you took. So the enemy's got to pay a penalty now because of what you went through. He's got to pay a price now. Now he's got to give you what you would have normally gotten because of what was done. So reparations are coming. And then restoration. That means I'm going to restore even what you lost. I'm going to put it back. And then divine compensation. You're getting ready to be blessed so much in this hour that this is going to be the hour that you'll always remember because it's through this situation that God's going to cause you to live on for the rest of your life in peace and favor and in the abundance of cash flow and blessings. Come on, decree and declare the abundance of cash flow. Mm -hmm. 
different wealth channels are opening up to you. Supernatural doors are opening up to you because God is vindicating you. God is giving you reparations. God is giving you restoration and supernaturally, divinely compensating you. Mm -hmm. The lady that, that lost her husband, that her two children were getting ready to be taken as bond servants. Uh, at the end of the day, after she obeyed the prophet, she, she used what she had. The prophet took it and, and caused that oil not to stop flowing. They went and sold all the oil. She paid off her debt, the Bible says paid off all that her husband owed and the Bible says she lived from the rest I'm time to tell you something's getting ready to happen for you in this hour that's going to be so big that not only will you be debt free but you're getting ready to live off of hallelujah just the just the, the residuals you get ready to live off just the spoils of the effectiveness of this time of the thing that affected you that God has caused and allowed to happen and now God's going to compensate you as a result and you're going to be divinely compensated for the rest of your days I decree it and declare it you ain't gonna be worried about welfare. You ain't gonna be worried about no special check. You ain't gonna be worried about no special this or that. You're gonna forget. You're gonna forget about people that either owed you money. That's how much money's coming. That you're getting ready to forget about people that owed you money. You're gonna see them go, oh, they did. And you guys gonna make you forget about everything that's ever hurt you or ever, hallelujah, done, hallelujah, ever brought pain into your life. Mm. Cause this is the season that God's gonna cause you to reign in abundance and favor and glory. And it's gonna be so big that's gonna outdo anything that's ever been done before. For this this is a record-breaking season. Yes. Don't expect what you, to get what you ever got before on the levels you've got it before because greater levels, greater heights, greater increase is coming into your life in a supernatural way and nothing the enemy can do to stop what God's getting ready to release in your life because yes. what's getting ready to be released in your life is something that's never been done in your life before. So get ready for supernatural blessings. Get ready for new opportunities, new connections, new breakthroughs. Get ready. I I want you to reimagine, realign, and reassess your life and understand that what's happening, hallelujah, is going to be a God thing. It's going to be a divine blessing yes. that's coming to your house and it's starting right now. Come on, say right now. Right now. Yes, yes right God. now. My God. My hey, hit God. A flat, C sharp, D, G, whatever, because, <laughs> because favor is getting ready to come incredible yes. in incredible ways. Hallelujah. Because Jesus. what has been taken is now being, come on, is now being restored. Yes. He said, I will restore even the thing that I took not, not away. Wow. And blessings that have been held up are now being released. Hallelujah. Breakthroughs that have been held up are now being released. Things that you've been praying, praying about for years that's been held up is now being released. Oh, yes. How are you going to release it in 2020? Maybe 21, maybe 22. No, God says in, in the same year, God will cause the same year of famine. God will cause blessings to be released. Glory to yes, God. Yes, Hallelujah. Sir. Yes, sir. Yes, you sir. better get ready. Oh, yes. You better get ready. You better get ready because something big is coming your way. Come on. You better get ready because something big is breaking through and coming in your behalf. Something is coming it. big to your address. Something that you not know not of. Something that you never imagined is getting ready to happen. And it's going to bless you. It's going to bless your children. Yeah, somebody got some lawsuits that's held up. And God said, I'm getting ready after this pandemic is over. I'm getting ready to have them rule in your favor. Judges are ruling in your favor. Hey, Shanta, juries are ruling in your favor. Who am I talking to? The jury is on your Woo! side. My God. God's got juries and judges that are on the people of God's side. Yeah. And God's getting ready to open things up that, 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 that they prayed about before this even happened. God has not forgotten about what he's promised. Mm, thank you, Jesus. Yay, yeah, glory Anyways, to God. Favor. Favor with decisions, favor with magistrates, favor, favor with, with, with legislation, yes. favor with the Congress, favor with the Senate, favor with government officials, favor, hallelujah, every place you go, you're going to see favor. There's no door that God can't get in. There's no body's heart that God can't influence. God is the influencer of hearts, and God is working the hearts of men in your direction. God is working on the hearts of men in top positions and working them and causing them to rule in your favor. Come on. 
on. Declare the ruling shall be in my favor. The ruling oh, shall Rabbi, be in my favor. Underwriters are getting ready to rule in your favor. Yes. Oh, Rabbi, call Rashata. Bring presidents are getting ready to rule in Woo! your favor. Things are happening in the realm of the rulings. Yes. And the rulings are going in the people of God's favor. Yes. Come on, declare rulings are going in my favor. Rulings are going in my favor. I hey, that. glory to God. God. Because what's getting ready to come should be better than anything that they've ever seen before. Come on. Anything we've ever experienced before is getting ready to be better than that. Better, 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 better. I decree and declare. Somebody shout better, 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 better. Because the forces that are with us are greater than the ones that are against come us. On. God alone outweighs everything that comes yes. against us. You and God together like Lord and Taylor, yeah. like Lord and Medina and Lord and Oren. I'm telling you and God, you and the God Lord together, come on, come on, it overrules the majority come in on. the spirit. Somebody shout hallelujah. Y'all better put some hearts come out on. there. Y'all better send some hearts out there because God is ruling in your favor. Come on, come on, come on. God is causing men's hearts to turn in your favor. Yeah. God is causing men's hearts to now rule in your favor. I do. I believe that. Oh, yes. I accept it. Cases so. are being released that have been delayed. Cases are being released Come that on. have been delayed. Cases with judges kept pushing off, pushing it off. God said, now, after this is over, I'm going to cause them to rule in your favor. Woo! I got to praise him. Glory to God. Come on. Y'all better praise him. I, I need some hearts out there. Y'all better give God some hearts and say better's coming. Better's coming. Come on. Get some hearts out there. Say God's getting ready to remanufacture my life. Come on. Put some more hearts out there. Come on. Say better is coming. Say God is renovating, restoring. Better. Hallelujah. And come on. And putting my life back together in a great way. Greater. Yeah. Greater and better is coming. Glory to God. Hallelujah. And I'm not expecting it to look like it looked before. Ooh. Hallelujah. You got to be open to the new and improved. I come it's to tell you, day. I come to tell you that trouble happened. Hallelujah. Not against you, but it happened for you. Yes. Let me say it again. What's happened didn't happen against you, but it happened for you. Why could it happen for me? Because all things, good things and bad things work together. Romans 8 and 28, for the good to them that who what? Love, love God. God. Tell your neighbor, it didn't happen against me. It happened for me. It happened for me. Because hey, God knows how to work what's happened against you. Yes. He knows how to make it work for you. And even though, you. even though it was meant to go against you, it worked in, in your favor right. and it happened for you. Right, right, right. right. Uh, like Joseph, somebody you, better shout hallelujah. Said, you meant it for evil, but God meant it for good. To what? Save much people alive. Uh, I don't know. You got to hear this. All this big breakthrough, all this big increase, all this big promotion, all this big real estate portfolio, all of this overflow is connected to save much people. God's going to use it some way, somehow in mm. this big old master plan. Huh? Souls are going to be saved. <laughs> Somebody's going to be rescued. Somebody's going to be delivered. Glory be to God. You're going to be able to shift somebody's life from one place to another. Because when God spoke to you, you trust him and you moved. It increased your resources. And when you had to move somebody from being bound and relocate them physically to a whole nother place, you had the power to do it. Mm. He's giving you honey for your sting. Yes. <laughs> He's giving you money with a purpose, <laughs> resources with a purpose, That's increase right. with a purpose. It's about his agenda. Ah, it's about the, listen, it's, it's about reaching this world. Because see, you always have that religious spirit that'll sit there and look and say, oh, what are they talking about? We're in the midst of a pandemic. No, no, no. The all of our life <sighs> is about God. That's right. This is all about God. And if we don't step in and step into what Bishop said, to step into it, what God is telling us to step into, then when God wants to use it, we don't have it in our possession. Mm. You got to occupy the very thing that God told you to trust him for. If God says, I want to restore you, then you don't talk about lack and little. You talk about restoration. If God says, I'm giving you more than ever before, you don't talk about what everybody else is saying on, on, on the news. That's you right. say more than before. Why? Because God has a purpose in That's that. Right. Joseph's possession and positioning and everybody else was about God's big master plan. If you, if you didn't hear God 
and, and, and go with God and say, occupy the spaces that he told you to, to, to occupy. Then when he wants to use it, he can't use it. Why? Because the, the, the heathen got it. Wow. And the heathen is not going to use it no. for God. No. The, the, the heathen is not going to say, oh, let me sow into God's mission. Mm. The, the heathen don't care about God's mission. The heathen cares about his own That's agenda. Right. So we just got to just deal with that spirit right there. The case is on the timeline. And don't, and don't you let nobody talk you out of what God is talking you and mm. preaching you and pushing you into so that he can use it for his glory. If he says the whole block, you say the whole block. Because huh. I'll tell you something. He driving some folks out. He's driving <laughs> them out. <laughs> to bring you in. To bring his people in. <laughs> yes, he is. They would have never given it Come up. Come on! But situations and circumstances causing them to give it up. Some I'll people. drive them out to bring you in. Some people going to take over property. Just, they're just going to say, just take it over. Take it over. <laughs> no down payment. No, just, just take it over. They're going to transfer the deed. They take it over. You're going to take over that real estate. You're going to take over that plot. You're going to take over that land. And so when Bishop is preaching, because while you're ministering, I'm sensing a, a whole nother spirit here, too, on this timeline that wants to be like, oh, they're just talking about. So, no, we, this is all about God. Wow. We ain't trying to go back in the world. We know ain't nothing out there. We're trying to get the people of God to believe what he's saying to mm -hmm. them. What he's saying. If you don't occupy, if you don't take it when he says take it. Look all through the scripture where he says, I've given you this land. Yes. When he says, I've given you this land, what does he, what does he want you to do? He wants you to show up and take the show land. Show up, take it. He's telling you what's already done. He's revealed his will. He's revealed his will for us to not go on around just repeating what everybody else is saying, doom and gloom and hold oh, and you all scared and afraid God. No, 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 no. He's giving you his will. He's revealing his will to you. He's giving us a rhema word today. What you going to do about it? You just going to hear it, shout a little bit. God says he's dealing with every, every number concerning your life. Wow. You got to go and, and meditate with that. What does that mean? Even your social security number, your credit. Come on. So he says, okay, I want to use this. I want to use, I'm going to use this. He'll prompt you. And in a moment's notice, you'll go ahead and obey God in whatever way he wants you to use the places or the resources that he has given you. Yes. Don't you, don't you back down. Don't you relent. Don't you, don't you shrink back. <laughs> you stand in faith and make God proper proud. The promises are still in progress. They're still in progress. They, <laughs> as a matter of fact, the scripture says it's his promises that keeps us going. Yes. Why are you moving like that? Why are you planning That's like his that? his promise. His promise. Yeah. Boy, his promise I mean, still stands. Man of God, you preach today. I mean, his I promise mean, still stands. Great Jesus. is thy faithfulness. I, we're still in his hands. Yes. Great is thy faithfulness. His mm. promise still stands. Yes. His promise hasn't changed. Yes. And that's what we got to understand something. God is not concerned about this and that. God knew this before he promised you. God knew, but that song God knew what's going to happen. He got the whole world in his hands. Yeah. <laughs> but, 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 but God knew that 2020 would happen before he gave the promise. Yes, he did. Just like he knew that Joseph's brothers would put him in the pit before he gave Joseph the promise. He knew that part of his wife would lie on Joseph before he gave Joseph the promise. He knew that he, Joseph would end up in prison before he gave the promise. And that's why you got to understand, God knew 2020 was going to happen, but God also knew that his promise will still stand. That's right. It's still valid. COVID-19 is it's not still, a surprise. Yes. God ain't like, oh, COVID, so I changed my mind. <laughs> right. He's God. His promise still stands. Great is his faithfulness. Oh, great is his faithfulness. Every morning they're made new. Great is thy faithfulness. God He's going to be faithful faith. in spite of it. Oh, yes. In spite of what we're going through, God is faithful. Glory to God. And God is so into his word. The Bible says that he exalts his word above his name. And his, his name, name is, is his, huge. His, his character. His name is everything. That's how serious God is about what he said. Yeah. What he has spoken. Yes. And it's not strange in the word of God. So what men are cast down. Say what? There's a lifting. Yeah, there's lifting. God is looking at his children, his little children, his sons and daughters in the earth. He wants to see our faith. That's right. He wants to see that we trust him. He wants to see us walking around like God's got us covered. We're not saying to be silly and, you know, and, mm. and go around and do reckless things. We're talking about in being confident in the God that we yes. serve. That word today, God have mercy. That was awesome. Thank you for that. Word. God is good.